Here on the SU Athletics Update, we're talking to Delaware Resource Group Super Star Athlete of the Week, Hunter Aguirre, a junior from Oklahoma City who's contributed in many ways to the Stars baseball team this year. And first of all, you had a game where you hit two home runs and had seven RBIs against Mac U. Uh, what went into that performance? Uh, just seeing the ball really well, you know, getting into situations with runner on base and luckily getting a pitch I could drive and handle and coming up big for the team. And everybody was on that game when we that game, 20-5, to 5, I think, was the final, so we all contributed a part, and I was just happy to be a part of it. You also got a chance to pitch in an extra inning situation against Southwestern. Uh, what kind of situations could we expect to see you in a pitching role? Uh, Denny's always on me about working hard. You know, in the fall, I was being our only two-way guy, pitching and hitting. He's got me running all over the place, so I have to kind of be in that mental mindset to be ready to go in at any time and relief situations, kind of spot relief. And then also, if I'm on the bench, be ready to grab a bat and go up and hit. So... Try to be a multi-use guy and be there when they need me. You made some impressive plays in the outfield as well. How much pride do you take in your ability to play defense? Uh, when I was younger, uh, I would always tell myself before the games, like in Little League and stuff, try to do something, whether it be getting a bunt down, going to make a play defensively, coming into pitch or maybe getting a key hit uh, to help the team. And as I've gotten older, I've been able to try to, you know, combine those things. So I'm, I take pride in my defense and really try to take pride in everything I do on the field. So, What needs to happen to ensure that the team builds off of the early season success? I think as a team we need to just keep the trust in each other and be able to understand that each guy in our lineup, we have, a very, we have multiple lineups that can get the job done. And as long as we keep that trust in each other, you know, keep our trust in the pitchers, we'll be just fine. We got a, we got a lot of talent and we work hard, so I think we'll be just fine. What brought you here to OCU? Well, you know, I'm a local guy from Oklahoma City, went to Westmore, and uh, I've known the tradition here at OCU, and uh, Keith and Denny both recruited me out of high school. I decided to go to junior college, but I needed to, you know, get a little bit stronger, and uh, when Keith called me last year at my last season at junior college, I knew it was time to come to OCU, and, and uh, I love it here, and it's been a blessing. One of the unique and fun things about baseball is the ability to have walkout songs at yeah. home games. And you've, cho you've chosen one of yours as the theme from the movie Flash Gordon. Right. Uh, so what goes into choosing a walkout song, and why, why did you choose that one? That one takes me back to high school as well. Uh, we, my, on varsity, we got walk-up songs, and I was sitting in the living room one morning and uh, was going through them, just trying to pick out a good one, a catchy one. And my mom overheard me playing Flash, and she was like, oh, my gosh, I love that one. So... I decided to go with it and uh, decided to go back to it this year. So I, I, it's a good song, kind of different than most others, and I'm a different kind of guy. So I, I kind of like to be a little off the beaten path. So, What's your major here at OCU? Uh, business administration. So what kind of career goals do you have when baseball's over? Well, I'd like to uh, own a business personally, kind of be my own boss. Uh, I've also looked into maybe getting a minor in uh, sports management and maybe look into being an athletic director kind of be able to affect kids' lives and uh, be a part of all sports, not just baseball, and try to help, you know, push through uh, athletics. All right, talking to Delaware Resource Group Superstar Athlete of the Week, Hunter Aguirre, and coming up next on the OCU Athletics Update, we'll talk to the baseball coach, Denny Craybaugh. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Learn more at NAIA.org. Here on the OCU Athletics Update, we're talking to baseball coach Denny Craybaugh. The Stars are currently on a nine-game winning streak and ranked fourth in the NAIA. And coach, last week you stayed unbeaten in conference play by sweeping Mac U and also got a win over Southwestern Oklahoma State. Uh, recap last week for us. Okay, um, Southwestern game was a really good game. Uh, one of my favorite games of the year. Uh, went extra innings. We went 12 innings. 
in the ball game and it was tied all the way through and Jeremy, Jeremy Littell hit a two-run bomb in the 12th to give us uh, the cushion and win the ball game. But it was what, really a good game because they had chances to score. They didn't, we didn't give up, we didn't give in and we never panicked and throughout the whole ball game and even in extra innings and it was really fun. Uh, the Mac U series, uh, our starting pitchers did very well, uh, kept them down a little bit, and then our offense just went crazy. Uh, I think we scored, what, uh, 15, 20, and then eight runs in the three games. Uh, our offense, the Baker, Jared Baker had a good series. Sean Corso had a good series. Hunter Geary had a good series. I mean, a lot of different people had good series, and uh, we just made them pay for bad pitching. And uh, it was fun to watch all the way through. Even when we were down, we got down five in a game against Mid-America. We were down five to one after two, but it really wasn't any panic in the dugout or anything out like that. It's like, all right, let's just stay focused, stay locked in. And we put up a 12 spot on them and game over. The first in-season rankings came out recently and you jumped from unranked to being ranked fourth. Uh, what does that say about the program and how important is that number to be ranked fourth? Well, I think one, it, it validates this team and their mission to get it back. We talked about getting things back and it's a testimony to their hard work, uh, to the things that they've done, the commitment they've made to this program and going out and doing the things that we've asked of them. And because they've done the things that we ask of them and because they are skilled at what they do, uh, they've won a lot of ball games. And then when you combine that with the tradition of our program, then uh, I expected that, actually, to tell you the truth uh, at that point in time. And then rankings are important uh, because when, when you get to the end of the season, when you start talking about opening round bids and stuff like that, the higher your ranking, the better your chances to be a higher seed. And what we would like to be able to do is be a number one seed on our own field hosting an opening round tournament. In order to do that, we've got to keep our rankings up in the top tens. So, but it's, uh, there's a lot of pride there for me too. Uh, the tradition and, and that type of thing for, for us to be recognized as one of the top teams in the country again, uh, that's something special to me. You're also 6-2 and two against other ranked teams this year. So how important will that record be as we start talking about postseason positioning and seeding? It's very important. One, it shows our team and it shows everybody else that I think we're back and that we can go compete at the national level, that we do have what it takes to go win those type of ball games against good, tough competition. And it can only help us when you look at our schedule and the things that we've done and the people that we've played. When it comes playoff time, we will have been tested. And uh, that's part of the thought process is when I put together schedules, I want to try to put together a schedule with some tough teams, as tough of teams we can, and it will pay off at the end. Everybody in your lineup is a capable hitter. So how much confidence does that give your team knowing that each guy up next is capable of getting a big hit? Oh, it, it's been amazing and it's wonderful to know that we're not relying on one or two guys. Every game it seems like there's a couple of guys that uh, – come up and have big games for us that didn't have a big game. We don't always have to rely on Jared or Sean or Corey or someone like that to sit there and provide the offense. And just to know and every, and when you have that kind of expectation in your lineup, good things happen. And one, one thing that really uh, benefit that people don't always see is like to our pitching staff. We know our pitchers, and I tell them all the time, you just got to give us a chance. Keep us in the ball game. Let's stay away from the big innings and let the offense do their job. And so far, that's one, been one of the keys this year is, is our pitchers have kept us in ball games and our offense does what they're capable of doing. But uh, it gives you great comfort knowing that one through nine, anybody can step up and win you a ball game. Jared Baker is closing in on the school record for doubles, a record currently held by Kirk Walker. So how special would it be for Jared to get that record? Uh, very special, because Kirk Walker is revered around the program. Uh, he was a four-year guy, and more than anything else, uh, he had skills, obviously, but he was so consistent in what he did day in and day out, how he came to the ballpark day in and day out, how he performed day in and day out. He was an NAIA Player of the Year, his senior year. So if, when Jared ba breaks this record, it's going to be special because Jared is the same type of player as Kirk. He comes to the ballpark, 
ready to go every day, his attitude's good every day, he performs day after day, and he's just Mr. Consistency. And uh, that's one of those things, uh, there couldn't be happened to a better guy than Jared Baker. If he's gonna, somebody's gonna break Kurt Walker's record, Jared Baker would be the guy that I would most likely enjoy having doing it. We've talked a lot about your hitting because it has been so good, but also your pitching, you've mentioned a little bit, has been pretty pretty special as well. So tell us about some of your pitchers. Well, our uh, four main starters, Matt Young, Mark Simon, Roberto Delgado, and Craig Kanaki, they all have been outstanding all year, very steady all year. They, uh, they've they been going out there, and they get us deep into ball games. And they've, so they've given up some runs here and there, but they, they bend, but they don't break. And when you sit there and you can get good starting pitchers that go, can go deep into ball games, then you can get into the bullpen, the back end of the bullpen, bullpen. Tyler Milligan has been outstanding as a closer. And we've got a couple other guys, uh, Holden Lyons and J.R. Holloway, that are really kind of stepping up in the middle. And hopefully uh, this, all the experience that these guys are getting and the innings that we're getting with some of the other guys as well, uh, it just helps us come playoff time because that's right now what we're trying to do. We're trying to put together our p pitching staff to get ready for playoffs, and we're going to be tweaking it here and there, and uh, hopefully they'll continue to do well. But uh, when you sit there and you've got good, solid pitching and outstanding offense, and one thing we don't mention is defense. Defense has been outstanding. Skyler Bing and Garrett Foster in the middle and Sean Corso, they've been outstanding defensively. So it gives your pitching staff pretty good confidence knowing that, hey, these guys, if they put it in play, these guys are going to go get it. And if I give up a run or so, it's not going to be a big deal because these guys are going to go get it back for me in a hurry. Pretty easy to pitch for this team. As we start heading into conference play, how do you ensure that your team continues to build on the momentum that it has so that it is playing its best at the end of the season during postseason? Well, I think that's one of the things about this ball club. I like their emotional maturity. I think they're, they don't get too high, don't get too low. I think they recognize that there's still a lot of season to be played and that we still want to be playing our best baseball in May. And every day, even though we're Looking towards Lewiston right now, that's where we want to be. Every day is part of that stepping stone process and doing it. So I, I think just keeping them focused, and we're talking about not being content with where we're at, and just making sure every day we have a chance to do something. Somebody, somehow, some way, find a way to help us win a ball game today and try to keep everybody actively engaged in that process to sit there and realize hey, this is not where we want to be. We want to be in Lewiston come Memorial Day weekend, and this is how we're going to do it, and we just got to stay focused and not get content and, uh, and sit around and rest on our laurels because there's a lot of people that want a piece of us because uh, we're Oklahoma City University. That's just that's the way it is, and that's the way we like it. All right, talking to Stars baseball coach Denny Craybaugh. You can follow OCU Baseball on OCUsports.com.